Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to part two of this four-part series on making a video settings menu. In the last video, we made a custom selector that allowed the player to choose at what level they want their settings. In this video, we're going to make the menu itself, so we're going to make the widget for it. And you can see a preview of what we're going to make on the right-hand side of your screen now. That said, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator for making this series possible. And all of that said, fire up your projects and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the editor. So in the last video, we set up the button, or set of buttons, since there's two, that will be used over and over again throughout our actual settings menu. In this video, we are going to start setting up our settings menu. So the way we're going to do this is, well, we're going to need a new widget. So, we're going to create a widget. This will be BP settings green all right now the first thing i want to do before going any further actually is i want to go to my settings and i want to go to my project settings and then to input and in input i'm going to create a new mapping we can ignore the camera reset lock on and this will be open settings menu and I'm just going to double check that was q i used there Get rid of all the Oculus and touch stuff, but we'll leave that in. And we're gonna use P. Let's get rid of gamepad, and there's the P key. All right, I just want that in because I'm gonna do something that's gonna be slightly, I'm gonna, I just want that in because I'm gonna be using something that's gonna call this up in our new widget. I'm just not sure if that's gonna be in this video or the next, but having it ready is useful. I'm gonna open up my project settings, just gonna save it so I get rid of that little asterisk, and and I'm going to grab a border just so I have some sort of background. I'm going to split the anchors there and there. And these sizes are just randomly picked based on work I've done previously. So don't worry too much if you have a different setting. This element of it doesn't affect the overall anything. It's just kind of there to be something easier to look at. So under appearances, Speaking of easier look at, I'm going to change my brush color here. Uh, I, for some reason, I'm just going to go with a dark menu screen, I guess, because I like dark menu screens. And I'm going to change my opacity to point four, just cause. All right, that's why I have something that I can see through, kind of, I guess. So now that I had that done, I'm going to put a horizontal box in. I'm just going to grab my horizontal box and drop that back there. All right, I'm going to change the border name to just background. This will be my anchoring box, as I call them. All right, I'm then going to grab a size box. I want to make sure that this stays relatively the size I want. And I'm going to do a width and height override. So my width I want at 1700 my height I want at 700 there we go inside of here I'm gonna have a scroll box because we're gonna be able to scroll down I did not go inside of it there we go all right so inside of this scroll box what I'm gonna have is a vertical box I guess we didn't need that top anchoring box we could have decided with the size box all right now in my vertical box we're gonna have all of our other sort of elements and we're gonna have a whole bunch of horizontal boxes this is gonna be tedious and repetitive i apologize so i'm gonna have one horizontal box i'm just gonna name this my uh screen mode box and in here we're gonna have uh, some text once i find where text is and then outside of the text, we're going to have a drop down bar. So it's going to be under input. And we are looking for the combo box string. Drop that into there. Don't worry about how it looks right now. We'll take care of that all in just a moment. Okay. We going to then put a spacer in.
really wish I wouldn't keep opening up. So the spacer, we're gonna just go to our padding here and we are going to change bottom to 20. There we go. You can already see kind of scrolling, sorry. Just staring at that for a minute. We are then going to grab another horizontal box and drop it inside of our uh, vertical box here. This is the actual anchor. All right, in here, we're gonna have another set of text. Actually, sorry, in here first, we're gonna have a spacer. Then we're gonna have some text and then we're gonna have that drop down box again. And combo box. So, give me one second. Hit size the content on the background. That's why this is looking weird to me. So let's go to that first spacer we have there. We're gonna open up the padding. And on this one, we want to pad it so it's indented a bit. So we're gonna go from the left, actually so we're gonna go to the right and pad it 20 units. This window will be our windowed mode setting box. Let's actually take care of the text box real quick so you can see what we're doing here. This first text box, this will be uh, our screen mode text. It will say something like window mode. And then we'll have a text box that says either full screen or windowed. This will be our, if I can get the right thing selected, windowed setting text. We're gonna change this to read windowed type. And we can either have a borderless full screen or a properly windowed sort of setting. Next, we're gonna have another spacer. In fact, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate everything we've just done, that last text box. We're gonna paste that in here. And this one will be our resolution box. We'll have the same spacer, and this will be our resolution text. And we'll have it say something like display resolution. There we go. And because I'm just not a huge fan of this font size, I'm actually just not a huge fan of this font full stop. We're gonna change all the font while we're doing this to 20 from 24. Just cause it, for some reason at 24, it looks very goofy to me and I don't know why. I really should understand that sort of part of myself, but hey, I, I don't. It is what it is, I guess. All right, so next we're gonna have our V-Sync option. So again, we're gonna have a horizontal box I feel like I'm gonna be saying that a lot if you can't tell based on my tone of voice right there. There we go. I forgot the spacer, so I'm gonna delete that horizontal box. I'm just gonna copy the spacer in actually. All right, also, so I know what I'm looking for, main box. So we have our spacer. I'm gonna grab now that horizontal, drop that into the main box there. This will be our V-Sync box or our vertical sync box. And in here, we're just gonna have a thing of text. Again, we'll change that size to 20 in a moment. And we'll have a checkbox, if we could find it, there we go. And this will be our V-Sync text. And we'll just say, I can get to type, V-Sync. I'm actually gonna put some padding to the left of this. Put a padding of 15. In fact, I'm gonna do that, sorry, to the right of this. We're gonna change that back to zero. Put a 15 there. In fact, I'm gonna grab all these and put a padding of 15 to the right of the text, just so it reads a tiny bit better. There we go. I'm not a UI person, so if you know how to do this better than I'm doing it, go for however you wanna do it. This isn't the functionality part of it. I mean, this isn't the coding part. Um, and then again, I'm gonna change this font size to 20. Okay, so now that we've done that bit, we're getting on to the more fun bit. So the more fun bit is, well, first we're gonna start with our settings. So put our spacer in. 
I'm going to put a, another horizontal box in. In fact, I'm just going to do three in. I'm actually going to do two. Two horizontal boxes. Actually, you know what? We'll do one horizontal box. So I'm going to grab my horizontal box, drop that into my main window there. And in here, I'm going to take one text element, place that there, and I'm going to center it, of all things. Gasp. We're doing something slightly different. Fill. Center. And this will be my uh, quality header. Text. And this will say overall quality preset. Nothing fancy. This will be my quality header box. And then we're going to do another horizontal box without a uh, spacer this time that will actually house our first settings button. Of course, I put it in the wrong spot. So put that into the main box there. All right, so this box will actually be our overall quality setting box. So this will be our overall quality settings. And in here, we're going to have that widget we made in the last episode. So let me just grab that real quick from down here under user created. We have our selector or setting selector. We're going to grab that and just drop that in there. And again, we'll do fill. We'll do it from the center. There we go. So there is our first one. All right. Now comes the repetitive part. So let's go back here for a second. Let's see all that we have. We have our view distance, anti-aliasing, post-processing, shadows, textures, effects, foliage, and shading. Okay, so we need to add those into here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna have a bunch of horizontal boxes that repeat over and over again, with the same material in each single one of them. So we're going to do it once and then copy and paste at the same time is what I'm saying. So we'll go ahead and grab our horizontal box here. We'll drop it into our main box. And sorry, we're going to delete that first. We're going to grab a spacer first. This is the last spacer we're going to use for a tiny bit here. Drop that into our main box. I don't know why I just didn't copy one of the other ones, but whatever. 20. Okay, so we're gonna have one, we're gonna just actually make this a lot easier on us. We're gonna copy this quality box in our main box here, we're gonna paste it in, and this will be our individual uh, settings header. Just copy that. And I just noticed a typo in this. Get rid of that too now. All right, so this will say that of overall custom quality settings. I know, so I'm just going to do first letter capital of every word. We're going to change this also to 20. Change this to 20. All right, now we're going to do the repetitive part where we're just going to copy and paste a lot in a moment. So grab a horizontal box, drop it in main box, then grab yourself some text. It's too uh, late to say have yourself a merry little Christmas. Uh, I'm recording this on the 1st of January, so it's a little bit way late. All right, we want this fill, center, bottom, or vertically, sorry. We're gonna change again the font size. We're actually gonna go again with uh, 20. And then we're gonna grab our selector and drop that into the same box. Make sure you get it in the box, unlike me just there. There we go. Grab the selector. And again, we're gonna do fill. We're gonna do a center. We're gonna leave it at the vertically aligned fill there. There we go. So we've done that. Let's take this everything in there, copy it, and paste it. So we have view distance, texture, shadows, foliage. Oh, I'm pasting that badly. Shadows, 
foliage visual settings or visual effects post processing anti aliasing am i forgetting anything so we have view distance we have texture quality we have shadow foliage visual effects post processing anti aliasing okay so that's everything we're doing so all you need to do is go through and change all these over to the correct names and then label the boxes. I'd also label the widgets with what they're setting as well. So for example, let's take this first one. This is going to be our view distance box. We will say view distance text, view distance. And we'll actually name this view distance. There we go. And then you just repeat that throughout for the rest of these. So we have our textures box with our textures box or with our textures text, which we'll just say textures without the weird extra spacing. And this will be textures and so on. So I'm going to pause that here and we pick up when I finish filling this out. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. We have a list of all our editable uh, features and we have our ability to change things around. If you wanted some space between these, you can add some padding between the um, horizontal boxes, but I like it as it is is so the final thing we need to do is we need to add one more horizontal box and a spacer with some buttons so let's grab our spacer first let's go down to our main box drop that in there and we're gonna have a slightly shorter space and we just want one of ten at the very bottom and then we want another horizontal box and we're in here we're gonna have three buttons Okay, I really don't like UMGs for that reason. It's one of my pet peeves about them. In fact, you can't scroll up easily like that. So, we are going to have three buttons with three bits of text. So, grab a button, drop it into there. Grab some text, drop it into the button. Grab the button and text and paste it in. Actually, I lied. Don't paste it in. Put a spacer in first, then paste it in. So grab yourself a merry little spacer. That joke clearly hasn't left my head. If I haven't edited it out what I was uh, the joke I made earlier, I apologize. So the spacer on the right, we're gonna add a padding of just 10. Okay, now grab the button down to the spacer, copy and paste and then just grab the button and text and copy and paste next thing i should have done this earlier set the buttons to fill once they're set to fill set them to that horizontal sorry set the horizontal alignment to center there we go now we have three buttons at the bottom of the screen this button on the leftmost button 165 of mine will be our auto detect button. Auto detect button text. And this will say in it auto detect stroke default. Our center button will be our accept button. with our accept button text. And this will say accept changes. And then finally we'll have our cancel button with our cancel button text, which will simply say close stroke reject changes. So I try to find wording to make the, the amount is equally the same length Close, so reject, changes. Okay, 
So if we look at our accept button for a moment, we're gonna want to change our accept button just a tiny bit. So we're gonna want to have our accept button start as collapsed. And we'll deal with how that button becomes visible as we move through this series. So let's just go over to our event graph here. We're gonna delete everything except for this event construct. We need that. All right, so we'll leave our event construct up here. We'll come back to it in a moment. We're just going to create one custom event real quick. And this will be our initializer and in init video settings. And that's actually what we need on our event construct is to run that init video settings. That's really all we're using it for. Now, just really quickly. So we can do the stuff that I mentioned last week. And this is going to be a very minor step. Actually, it's a very important step. We're going to get all of our sort of things. I missed one of these. This is our overall quality. Kind of important not to miss that. We are going to make an array of all those buttons we put in. So we'll start with our overall quality. And we're going to do make array. And this array will be our video settings. So we just have an array of those widgets. And we're gonna cycle through them later on. This is just to get everything set up. We're gonna have a whole bunch of these. In fact, we're gonna have seven, not eight of those. Well, nine if you count the zero. Uh, remove array element. So we'll do them in the order they showed up in that last window. So whatever order you have here, starting with quality, some people do do quality at last. I think it should be first, just easier that way. Start with your quality and then the order in which you put everything else in. So for me, that is view distance followed by texture quality. And after texture, that's why that looked weird to me. I'm not sure what texture is. I saw that right before I paused the video to finish the, or while I was paused, had the video paused. I'm like, why does that look weird? textures there we go also you know what that's also a problem where is also i saw distances wrong jesus distances sorry i didn't like the fact the camel casing or pascal casing did not stick there we go view distance so after textures, we have shadows. After shadows, we have foliage. For me, at least. After that, we have visual effects. Post-processing. And anti-aliasing. There we go. So all we're doing here is creating an array of our settings widgets. And we're going to want to set some things on here. So let's go back to our widget from the last episode. And we're going to add in a couple of variables we want. We want a sort of owner variable. And unfortunately, I think the easiest way to do this instead of casting is to create a variable. We'll call this parent widget ref, and it will be of our type WBP settings screen. Make sure you sec select screen at selector. We're going to create a new function called set owning widget. We'll take our parent widget reference. We'll set it there. And then put the input into the set owning widget and have a return. That way we can pass that information in. And we're gonna want another one for what we'll have as a integer. So let's create a new variable. It will be called index. So this is an int. And we're gonna have another variable here called set index. And we'll grab our index, we'll set it, plug it into there. There we go. 
and have our lovely return node. Save that. And now that we've done that, let's go back to our settings screen. And in here, once we have made this widget, we're going to, sorry, this array, we're going to go through our array by looping through it. And we're going to run those two ver functions we've just set up. So we want for the loop body, or actually from the array element, we're going to do set owning widget. Plug that loop body into the execute. From the parent reference we've just put in, or the um, argument we put in, get a reference to self. We're going to pass in this widget to that widget. And then off the array element again, drag out. I'm not putting reroutes in. Do set index. There we go. And off the array index, just drag and drop that into there. And then take everything here, just highlight it all, and collapse it down to a function. And this will be initialize video settings. Grab that. Come into here and put a return node in. All right. I think that's enough for one video. We took ages, or I took ages, sorry, about getting us through this. I am never good at these uh, UMG setups. Coding side of things, a bit better at. So in the next video, we'll take care of all the code, and this is going to be even more tedious than setting up the widget, to be honest, um, that will run our settings window. That said, thank you to my Patreon sponsors for your support and helping keep the series and my channel alive, and thanks to viewers like you for your support and your viewership. Please, if you have not already, consider subscribing to this channel or at least liking this video. And if you want to help this channel out further and get uh, behind the scenes access, talk to me in private on Discord or get access to some of the projects, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial and I hope that you have a wonderful day.